Hello, my name is Duke Marsh. I'm Sarah Jemerson's grandfather. She's asked me to uh, say a few things about what life was like when I was around her age, maybe a little bit younger. So I think she's going to ask me a few questions, and uh, maybe we, maybe I can come up with some informative answers. Now you're looking at a picture of the house where I grew up. It's in the west end of New Albany on West 4th Street, and uh, I lived there until I was about 19 years old. And where did you go to school? Well, I went all six elementary grades to West Spring Street School uh, in New Albany, about two and a half blocks away from where I live, so it was easy to walk there every day. After that, I went to Scribner Junior High School, which at that time was located on East Spring Street between East 5th and 6th. And after that, starting in the ninth grade, I went to New Albany High School and finally graduated in 1959. I'd like to talk a little bit about what school was like when I was in the first through the sixth grade. Um, back in those days, you had a real fear of being spanked or paddled if you misbehaved. And there was a, uh, a rumor floating around that the principal actually had an electric paddle. I don't think that was the, the case, but uh, that certainly kept a lot of kids in line, just wondering whether or not it was the truth. Um, I remember going to lunch. Uh, our lunch money was 25 cents per day. For the most part, kids were pretty well behaved. I think there was a certain respect that, uh, that kids had for teachers and their authority at that time that uh, doesn't seem to be quite the same these days. Tell me about some places that you remember from your early childhood. Well, one of my fondest memories is uh, about a block and a half away, we had two, basically I would call them candy stores, ice cream. Uh, they were on opposite corners. Uh, and uh, it was a treat to get a nickel. Sometimes that's all it took because in those days uh, a soft drink cost a nickel, a candy bar cost a nickel, or you could get penny candy, sometimes two pieces of candy for a penny. Uh, ice cream cone, I think maybe a, a drumstick was like a dime. That was an expensive thing at that time. But uh, that was a big treat going there and then of course I remember many times walking uptown to uh, Woolworth's Dime Store in downtown New Albany. <laughs> All right, we were just laughing about the fact that I said sometimes my mother took me uptown and while we were uptown we would go downtown to uh, Woolworth's, which was one of my favorite places. Well, it all depends on where you came from, whether it was uptown or downtown. But uh, I love the, uh, the toys, of course, and the candy counter in Woolworth's. Okay, I remember Scribner Park. Uh, we had a lot of fun there playing ball games and just running around. And uh, one of the things we liked to do, I mean, back in those days, obviously, we didn't have the things that people have today, like computers, uh, Nintendo, Game Boy, so forth. We had to kind of make our own fun. One thing you could buy for a dime was a balsa wood glider plane. And uh, have great fun with that for hours until either it broke some way, a car ran over it, you stepped on it. If you had 50 cents, you could buy a bigger one that had a rubber band motor. Wind up the propeller, the thing would actually fly for several minutes at a time. That was also great fun. Of course, another fun pastime at the park was playing marbles. Marbles were very popular back in those days. We also had some other games we liked, like kick the can. We could play that out in the middle of the street. Back in those days, you didn't have to worry about traffic that much. It was easy to play games in the middle of the street. Yeah, a lot of times we had to be rather innovative. Instead of buying a toy, we would make our toys. Uh, we took boards and basically cut them down to make them swords. Uh, would decorate them, paint them, and then we would have sword fights. No one ever really got hurt or impaled or anything like that. Another thing we did, we would take two pieces of wood, nail them together, put a clothespin on the back, and then we would cut rubber rings out of an inner tube, big rubber bands basically. We would put these on these wooden guns that we made, press the clothespin, the rubber would go flying, and we played, I think, war and uh, other games that required shooting each other with those types of things. Violence. Violence, yeah. Make-believe violence. It's a good violence. Duke, how would you describe the electronic entertainment of your time? Nothing like it is today. 
When I was a younger child, we had only a combination AM radio and 78 RPM record player. Anyway, I see, I was nine years old, I think, when we got our first television set. Back in those days, they were home delivered. And we went through, I think, three until we finally settled on a Dumont, about a 16-inch screen, black and white, of course, that we kept for years. And in the early days of television, there were only two channels in Louisville, WAVE, WHAS. One of the very first TV shows that I remember was called T-Bar V Ranch, where kids would go over and celebrate their birthdays. Randy Atcher and Cactus uh, would host the program, and uh, they would get to stand with Randy and uh, tell their name, their age, and then wave to mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, and so forth and so on. Daily after school every day was Captain Video. That ran from like 1949, I think, to 1953 or 55, something like that. But, you know, here we were watching these small TV sets in black and white and thinking it was wonderful. No remote control. If you wanted to change the channel or the volume, you got up, you walked to the TV, and you turned the knob. Not only that, when you first turned it on, you waited for it to warm up. Electronics back in those days used vacuum tubes. So whether you were turning on your radio, your TV, or whatever, you expected to wait a full minute, minute and a half before anything would happen. Speaking of radios, one of my earliest hobby was building a radio, what we called a crystal radio set. It was really very simple. You get a block of wood, you would get a form to wind a coil on, and you had a little thing called a diode, a detector. But with the antenna and the headphones, you could pick up the local stations, at least one or two of them, very strongly and very clearly. Absolutely no power. The only power was simply the energy of the radio wave coming across the air. So I built several crystal radios in my time. Tell me some other things kids enjoyed doing when they were not in school. Well, of course there was always reading. That hasn't changed in all these years. Comic books were very popular. Comic books at that time were a dime, ten cents. And um, uh, games, hopscotch, if you had a piece of chalk, you could draw a hopscotch uh, on the sidewalk on the street, play that for hours. Jacks, those little little things that you throw down, <laughs> bounce the ball, and pick up. How do you describe what jacks are? That was a popular, especially with girls. Jump rope, jumping rope was very popular. What about board games? You had board games, right? We definitely had those. Of course, Monopoly. Monopoly is still around. Checkers. Chinese checkers were fun with marbles. We had a game called Shoots and Ladders, and uh, one game was called Cootie. It was like a big plastic bug, and uh, you rolled a dice to attach its head, and then each of six legs, maybe. Um, the first one that built their Cootie won the game. Simple. And another thing, since uh, we didn't have television, or at least not until later on, Going to the movies, to the movie show, was very popular, especially on weekends. On Saturday, we'd go up there and there would usually be a double feature. In other words, two movies, a cartoon. When the cartoon would come on, there would be five, six hundred kids in the theater that would all scream and yell at the same time. They were so happy to see either Bugs Bunny or Tweety and Sylvester or the Road Runner or Tom and Jerry. That was very popular. But anyway, when I was younger, Admission to the Grand Theater in New Albany was 12 cents. 12 cents for a child and maybe 25 cents possibly for an adult. I remember in 1953 I discovered what I thought was an amazing thing. Comic books came out that were in 3D. You had to wear a pair of red and blue glasses but you could actually see either Superman flying out off the page and depth into the page, and I just thought that was wonderful. Oh, yes, he knows about this. About 3D, yes. It's, it's still a hobby to this day. At the same time, movies came out in 3D. I remember the very first one I saw 
That was also in 1953. It was called The House of Wax. It was a horror movie with Vincent Price. And then I also discovered at the time a very popular toy with kids was Viewmaster. So that was yet another uh, part of my 3D interest, which as I said has lasted until this day. Another fond memory was uh, cereal. Of course we had cereal for breakfast, but there was always some kind of a neat offer on the back of the box. You could send in 25 cents and a box top for all various kinds of toys and neat things, and decoder rings, flashlight rings. That was so much fun to finally eat the cereal as quickly as you can so you could get the box top, beg your mom or dad for a quarter, put it in an envelope, send it away, and then every day wait until the mailman came to see if your item had arrived. That was always fun. Duke, what kind of bike did you have as a kid? Bicycles were a little bit different then than they are now. These days they have speeds, 10 speed, 12 speed, even more. They're lightweight. Back in those days every bike was one speed. They had big balloon tires and they were heavy compared to today's bike bikes. But anyway, we, we uh, had a good time with them and I mean, you know, all the kids in the neighborhood, I mean, that's how you got around. Occasionally we would take uh, uh, hikes into the woods, uh, like Silver Hills wasn't that far away from where I lived, where I grew up as a kid. We go hiking in the woods, that was an adventure. Um, speaking of the woods and things that grow, I'm going to talk a little bit about what lawnmowers were like. Exciting. Yes. We did not have power mowers. <laughs> Actually, they did come along a little bit later, but everyone I knew, uh, it was totally manual. You pushed it under your own power. And uh, so it took uh, a lot more work to cut the grass, but it did get the job done. All right, here's something that's really going to sound like the old days. The house in which I grew up, uh, we did not have a furnace. In the winter, we had separate coal stoves. One in the kitchen, one in the living room, and one in our front room. Daily, one of my chores was to go out into the shed and get buckets of coal to bring in to burn. Uh, sometimes in the morning, if the fire had, had gone out overnight, we had to put paper, kindling wood, and then coal in there and start a new fire. And believe me, on some winter mornings, it was very, very cold in there until the fire really got going well. A couple more things about my hobbies. I've always liked photography. My first camera was a Kodak Brownie. It used 127 film. Yes, film. No digital cameras back then. Another thing that, uh, that I did regarding uh, records, the old 78 records, I actually made a record player once. I took, I think it was maybe a 12 inch wooden ruler, made a big paper cone, attached it to the end of the ruler, stuck a long needle through the point of the cone, and then spun a record while placing the needle in the groove. Yeah, when people uh, would come to the house, my mom's friends uh, would watch me uh, do this uh, with my homemade record player, and they just thought it was amazing. Brilliant! Every, absolutely brilliant. I agree. What are some places <clears throat> that you and your friends and whatever would visit that we can still go to today? One of the first uh, places that comes to mind is uh, Zesto. It's on Charlestown Road when I was a kid. It was still on Charlestown Road, not exactly in the same spot it is now. I can still remember that's where I first discovered soft ice cream. At that time, we called it frozen custard. Um, <laughs> frozen okay. custard. But um, let me think of another place. Well, one of the, the, the dream place to go when we were kids was Fountain Ferry Park. Uh, it's no longer there. It was an amusement park with lots of rides. The uh, present day equivalent would be Kentucky Kingdom, I would say. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the Grand Theater was a very popular place when we were kids. The Grand is still there. It's not a movie theater anymore. Uh, they have uh, private events and uh, wedding receptions and so forth, but at least the Grand is still there. 
there actually is a ranch house now in uh, Floyd's Knobs off 150 in the Highlander Point Shopping Center, which uh, is the decor, it's decorated just like the ranch houses were back in the 50s. Pictures of Elvis and whatever. Elvis, absolutely. I saw Elvis in person in 1956 when I was 14. Obviously, the Culbertson Mansion, the historical place, it was there then, it's there now. It was there way before my time. It was built in the 1800s sometime. Older than he is. Yes, I do not remember the dinosaurs firsthand. What led up to your life as a video hermit in Silver Hills? A video hermit on Silver Hills. Well, that's an interesting uh, description of me. I will talk a little bit about what led to the things I did later in life. When I was uh, 10 years old, I started taking piano lessons. I took lessons for a couple of years, and um, when I was 14, I took up the saxophone. Well, out of high school, I had some college. I ended up getting a job as a lab technician, working with uh, plastics, epoxy resins. All right, I decided after a period of time that that wasn't for me, I went into music full time, um, mainly as a piano player. And uh, I did piano and keyboard work for over 20 years for a living. Then at some point, I did get into videography as a profession. And those are the main two occupations I have now. Photography is a very strong hobby, and every now and then I also make some money at that. It's very awkward. We go into places and I sit down and he takes pictures of me doing things. Okay. And I have become one of his number one subjects in most of his photos. Absolutely. Sarah is a great model. She poses and she's quite cooperative most of the time. Most of the time. Well, let me just say that uh, I've enjoyed uh, talking about some of the times and things that happened in my earlier life, you know, when I was around Sarah's age maybe just a little younger here she is so what do you think did we do did we do good yeah actually it's, did, did we do well i know this is english <laughs> class <laughs> what should we do now whoops well we all can see his hair oh my god and maybe we should fade to black what do you think i think we should mm -hmm. thank you very much and live long and prosper <laughs>